So I'm fine yeah. with losing the state, but for we can't now, hear you. The, the, right. yeah, the state is your best bet at getting rid of the corporations. All right, so you don't want to get right. rid of the corporations, maybe. That's another conversation to have in its own right. Okay, so hold on, hold on. I believe so, that you want to get rid of them. Keep them small. So okay, 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 hold on. But you're gonna pay a price. Hold on, Less hold on. innovation. It's okay. There's, there's trade-offs in everything. So <clears throat> I see that your your fundamental um, confusion is always you know you're always thinking about you know you're always thinking about the big mega corporations and how they can act um, beyond liability and as we both agreed you know and and how and how that's you know that's your fear in um, you know in a in a stateless society and why wouldn't that just happen in a stateless society with a slow aggregation of wealth so basically what I'm saying is. Forget, for example, about these, these these big corporations. That now, think every big corporation started small, right? Started the size of, you know, a little mom and pop shop, right? Yeah. And at that time, they could not act with such uh, immunity, right, to their actions, right? They had they had true accountability and you know and fundamental uh, respect for people. And if they didn't, they would quickly be driven out of business, bankrupt, you know, reputation destroyed, and they wouldn't even survive, right? So then, my my question is. At what point does a does a company, you know, forget about being called a corporation. At what point does a company grow, where there is no longer those forces of, you know, reputation and accountability and you know, here, and um, and and threat of social, you know, ostracism and boycott by people who don't agree with what they're doing. Like, at what point does a company? It, it, at what point are they free from that? And I would argue that they're never free, except when they are protected in the, in the sense of corporations by the state. They they receive corporate immunity, right, through through the state. Have you heard of Dupont, uh, a factory in Parkersburg, West Virginia, where where C8, this newest pollutant that's global, mm -hmm. that's persistent, has been detected, and that's probably the most well studied pollutant. C8. It was in Teflons, it's in your okay, tent okay. probably still. Okay. It's in everything. Okay. And unlike PCBs, which like to bind to body fat, this likes to stay in the blood. Uh -huh. Where it can be more impactful. Yeah. Sort of. Well, people in Parkersburg who were fed by DuPont turned their backs on the two people who brought trial against DuPont. Mm -hmm because they were downstream of a creek yeah. and that killed all, all their all their cows and got them sick with cancer. Right, right. The people believed in the corporation. Mm -hmm. They didn't need the state. It wasn't the state doing commercials mm -hmm. on behalf of DuPont. Mm -hmm. those, people. those people believed that their welfare was deeply intertwined right. with the welfare of DuPont right. and they regarded their neighbors of decades as their enemies because of that. There was no state there. Mm -hmm. That problem exists absent a state. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're Most right. people I agree. I agree. started leaving the pub where these two would enter. Mm -hmm. These two that had brought trial to DuPont. Mm -hmm. they, they would just get up and leave. You understand? That's okay. not a state. Th that corporation, because people are not logical, mm -hmm. right? remember the simplifying assumptions? Okay. People are not logical. Okay. People don't have complete information. In reality, it's not just the state that creates problems when you have large corporations. And large corporations can conceal information. How do you know they need to be held accountable for anything if they can conceal uh, evidence? So you don't think people would find out? <laughs> like, like that there would yeah, be... maybe they would find out in decades like they did anyway. People find out in decades, right? And then it takes time to go to trial because everybody has a right to a fair trial as per our constitution. And that can take time. You need to gather evidence. Are you saying that you've done enough to de de incentivize CEOs from doing harm? No, I mean, I still have decades. I can still conceal a lot of stuff. Um, even though I'm under threat of going to jail, I can still do that. I can still uh, mm -hmm. withdraw my money from the bank and go to Costa Rica. <laughs> As, 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 as has happened. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, so when I talk about these things, um, 
you know, I don't believe it's just the state that's that's the problem. Well, well, mm -hmm. when I talk about these things, I, I I try as much as possible to simplify because you know, as we as I said, we can get lost in all these rabbit holes, hypotheticals. What if this happens? This is what not a this hypothetical. This I know, I, true, I, I, I know what happened. Story. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. What but I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm just saying, there's a lot of hypotheticals that we can get lost in, mm -hmm. and so I try to simplify it down to the simplest components and you know what is a corporation but just a business I mean basically it's not the same as as a, as a regular mom and pop because they have intimate ties with the state but fundamentally they're a business selling a product right you guys are selling a product and and so yeah. at the simplest level they are liable for their product and if they injure their customers customers won't be happy and they're not gonna come back or they're gonna complain have, have or they heard that or, nobody would do business in that environment that too. That nobody that, would do business anymore yeah, if you did that, if you held everybody liable for every little thing, nobody would do business anymore. It's like, do I don't mean? want to go to jail. If you could enforce that correctly, where CEOs could not run away with money if they did something bad, nobody would step in to be a CEO anymore because there's no right way to do most of these things. Most of your economy as it is would go away. Maybe that's the answer. <laughs> you just find a way to enforce this, you know, you go to jail if you do anything wrong and have complete information you know, track complete traceability for everything. Are you gonna get them to keep records? Just in case? Or not? They're their own private thing. Why should we force them to keep records? <laughs> Until we find them. See, that's the problem with libertarianism. It, it, you, you have two tools at your disposal. Mm -hmm. Control by forcing people to be transparent. Control through transparency and through constraints, prevention, and, and the threat of fear. And libertarianism wants to use only one of those two, only the threat of fear. Until you, I caught you doing something harm, you're good. You do whatever the heck you want, right? You don't even have to keep records, dude. I don't have to look inside your records to see if you were doing anything wrong these three decades until I found out the problem. Uh -huh. You're good, dude. You know what I mean? Wait, wait, when you, when you say the threat of fear, what do you mean? What exactly do you it's mean? The that? threat of fear that if I catch you do something wrong, you're liable. But, but that's the only thing you want to use we have that today but it's not working very well we're not doing it as much as we should right the state is broken I agree but we also have the other tool uh, regulation control mm -hmm. you don't want that, right you don't want regulation and control on businesses on the economy you don't want a state to meddle in the business well when it comes to my welfare I, I damn sure want one regulation and for the state to meddle in the business of cor corporations for sure I do. I would have wanted that DuPont to be checked every two weeks for what they're doing so that this never would have happened, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know. I agree. Um, but, uh, you know, when you say... Like before, before the state in the U.S., wasn't this a libertarian utopia to an even greater extent when the oil barons were functioning? No. Like, how was it back then? Was it good? Wait, wait, wait. wait. The oil barons? What do you mean? You mean, you, you mean Carnegie, back in the day. Yeah. Carnegie the, and Vanderbilt? And yeah, those guys. Uh, what about what about them? Like, things were not very green, very cool back then either, and the state Why? wasn't wasn't that big. But they were stealing money through legally devised schemes. They weren't being violent against anyone. Is stealing money, is getting money from from an insurance company, uh, uh, violent or someone? What do you mean getting? How do they get money through an insurance company? Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll send you the. Okay, okay, okay. I'll send you the deal. They um, they kind of put something on paper. They charge. They fooled someone okay. in business. It was Rockefeller and one of his buddies. Yeah, I mean, I mean, those people. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that you know that these people acted you know saintly <laughs> or uh, you know free of free of uh, of uh, <clears throat> you know uh, punishment or prosecution. You know, but uh, what I'm, what I'm saying is that they. I think you know those, those people who. Um, I forget who. I forget, yeah, there was like they had the steel and the oil and all that, and um, I think it was, I think it was Rockefeller, right, with the oil. <clears throat> um, but but just I mean I mean I, I think how life was like before that, right? Before we had oil, before it was used and re refined and distributed, and and how much actually, if you think about you know our world today, all the um, luxuries and products that we use every day require oil and oil based that's products your, that's your fallacy right there what's the fallacy that you like to mention these days <laughs> appeal to <laughs> no but what i'm saying appeal we appeal to so because they did that then it would have been only them that could have done it right so we should accept them as they were but what i'm saying is the natural resource we couldn't have done it without them 
Is that what you're saying? Why Maybe we could have. But what I'm saying is the natural. Like, haven't states done it without uh, private interests? In many other places, it's not like we, it's not it's not a hypothetical. It's a proven thing. States done what? Extracted oil. If that's what you want to, <laughs> you want to, you know, applaud these barons for. <laughs> I mean, why, I mean, why do you I mean, give I mean, them so much credit for something that we could have done without them, right? I mean, they, I think they raised the standard of living of a lot of people <clears throat> that beforehand could not afford to heat their homes, you know, maybe through uh, coal they were using or through, I think, whale oil, <laughs> which is, you know, quite unsustainable. <clears throat> but now, now, you know, th through this discovery of this natural resource where, where a lot of people could afford it at pretty low prices, I but think again, that, I think that has really you're giving them a kudos that they don't deserve, because that's not something that we needed them you to get. You um, understand? Whether because, and I have proof because in other places we've done it without oil barons. It's not a hypothetical. Right. Like, like what do you mean? What do you mean other places? Like what? Like other countries? You mean? Take Europe. Europe is, doesn't have didn't have huge corporations doing these things. Okay, but what I'm saying is, before we started using these natural resources. Life was very difficult, and the population of of, of context, humanity was right? like we, we were like struggling at to feed a billion people, and in, and, and in the twentieth century we have exploded to seven billion. What's the context billion. in which you, you you're putting this forward? What do you mean? In what context? Is this in the context of our existing argument? <laughs> well, you, I mean, you brought them up. <laughs> I brought them up, but it, it almost sounds like you wanna you wanna you wanna put them in a you wanna justify their you know their their rights or something. It's like. They had to be there. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to, you know, to I mean, improve somebody, our society. If they weren't there, somebody else m m might have done the, the very state, same thing. for example, might have done it. Yes. People, if agents of the state. Yeah. <laughs> yes. yes, but not private interests. Public interests. It's in the interest of everyone to have heating in their homes. Right. You could do it to public interests, just like you can do healthcare and education. Those are common interests. Yeah, there's another. Um, so, there's but another... again, the, the, where do we, where are we coming from? With this? We're coming from whether the state is the necessary agent for harm in the economy. And I'm, my argument, my um, assertion is that it's not. It's yeah. Large corporations. That do that. Your assertion is that without the state, those large corporations wouldn't be able to enact that kind of harm on people. And my assertion is that they would. Uh, actually, yeah, yeah. Basically, what I'm saying is that the the main reason why those those corporations have been able to act recklessly and beyond punishment is because they have intimate ties with the state, and they most likely would have not have grown to such mega. Well, I, mega I propose a different. I propose a different causality direction. The corporations would have enacted this in any in any case, but the state was the convenient tool for them to enact it in the most efficient way possible. Yeah, you're right. So <laughs> I agree. <laughs> it's not because of the state; it's because they exist, and because the state is available. You know what I mean? The state is not the cause. The state is a tool at hand. Without the state, they they could still do it. The Koch brothers would still sell you their oil. You wouldn't be sitting, staying put, not buying their oil. You would still go go to work, right? Under threat of starvation. It's not everybody can grow their food. I mean, um, maybe you could maybe you see it's all about education maybe if you could educate enough people to be a certain way mm -hmm. you could do things that way right if you could educate everybody to mind their own business you and you would have only a fringe you'd always, you'll always have a fringe of people who don't respect that if you had only a fringe maybe you would be able to keep that in check yeah but i don't see if you if you fundamentally allow accumulations of power how you can keep it in check you have to to crack down on them at some point and, if, well, if, think, and the state seems to be the most convenient tool to do so if you can fix it. Like, I mean, like it's kind of get rid of the state, but don't get rid of the Koch brothers. What are you going to do? <laughs> That's kind of confusing because when you say power, you're also talking about um, CEOs and, and the state, whereas I see them as very different in the sense that, you know, um, Google, again, Google doesn't have a gun to your head forcing you to use Google, right? I mean, um, you don't need to. Um, everybody Monsanto, to you know. Uh, I mean. All right. So, so talking about large corporations and, and also monopolies, right? That's that's a very interesting topic because, um, so basically, a monopoly is something that has, um, you know, large access to, you know, I guess a majority of the, of the, uh, of the customers of a particular field, right? Now, now that can happen in the in the presence of a state where you know, by law, you're forced 
to to buy something, let's say, as in Obamacare, as in you know the Federal Reserve monopoly on currency, you have to use. I'm fine with being forced that. Okay, hold on, hold on. Okay. So, so those are examples of forced monopoly or like public education. Well, why do you You're bring forced. up the state? We were just talking about no, breaking no, monopolies. No, I'm talking. Right? Okay, hold on. Why did you bring I'm, up the I'm making a distinction between forced monopolies and natural monopolies. So. So a monopoly that's forced is brought about by by legislation, whereas a an, an, a natural monopoly would be would be a business that performs or or produces its product and perform, performs its services in such a superior way that very few people can compete, okay. and therefore and they're fine they, they with natural monopolies. But what I'm hold on hold on hold on. But what I'm saying is if if they are so competent and so skilled that they're that they're satisfying consumer demand. And then people patronize them because they love their products and they love their services. And as a result, they grow and grow and grow. I really don't see a problem with that. Oh, right? but you see be a problem with healthcare provided by the state growing and growing and growing because people see the benefit in that. It's like you've just described healthcare provided by the state. People see the benefit. What do you mean it's forced? It's forced by the people's choices over themselves. Forced, forced in the sense that um, it's provided by <laughs> it's, it's, it's mandated by legislation. So, and you're, you're, you're mandated but, but, but to, to buy healthcare. But that doesn't matter. If you see the benefit in having healthcare, then it doesn't matter that there's a piece of paper somewhere saying that you have to do it. The problem is you're not ready for it. Other countries are ready for for public for the public uh, for public healthcare. And, and again, I always not I, I always reduce. But look, it. you've changed the conversation when you started recording. <laughs> No, 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 because I want to I was to saying if you're fine without monopolies, I'm fine without a state. And then you you changed the conversation no, and you I'm, said I'm, natural I'm, monopolies you're fine with. I'm clarifying what you know what 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 I mean when I say monopoly because monopoly itself is just a too generic of a term. Okay, um, but, 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 but I always, are you okay with natural monopolies existing in a, in a, in an economy? Again, if they are satisfying consumer demand, right? If if they are performing are their the function. Are the Koch brothers satisfying the consumer demand? And here's the problem. Consumer demand is too restrictive. Consumer demand can be disconnected from need. Right. You need pure, you need clean air to breathe, but your demand is for more gas and more oil. Mm -hmm. So when you say they satisfy consumer demand, you're not even beginning to capture how you should be thinking about the problem. Mm -hmm. You should be thinking about what people need. And there are some universal needs. Hey, clean air and healthcare. Are universal needs. Yeah. Education, we might be able to, to dabble in it and say we're, we're not agreeing. <laughs> but you need healthcare and clean air. Good. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's good. I agree. We all need food. That's one thing. We all need healthcare and, and clean air. Or, but no, let's say healthcare, actually. That's, that's, that's a better example. Because that, that is not like, that's not like a resource that you can just, you know, like flowers or something. That, that's a service that's provided by Beautiful. people. Beautiful. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is, even if you wanted to, 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 to put to put to pose the problem in this manner and say we're gonna let things be driven by consumer demand, not by their needs. Yeah. If consumer demand is not aligned with their needs, to hell with them. Let them have it. Let them die, live or die by their own choice. Fine. But again, even then, you would be fine with the Koch brothers. Okay. Again, I'm you not know, talking having about having a I'm monopoly. Not, I'm not talking about anything that's existing today, right? Because there's so much. There's so much perversion of incentives that's occurring right now um, with, with the presence of the state that it's hard to even imagine how they would function or that, how they would grow to such um, you know, huge proportions in the absence of the state. Um, but what I'm saying is, I, you know, when I talk about these things, I always simplify it down to the simplest components like, um, you know, again, like the small businesses like, like Brian, right? <coughs> um, you know, talking about monopolies, right? He doesn't have a monopoly on, on, on you know, cooking, on, on uh, you know, lunch and dinner, you know. He's trying to satisfy his consumers. And, and I think that kind of accountability is always Here apparent, is, is always is, present. doesn't matter how big you are. What and, you're and saying also, is, yes, no. If you, if you get big enough, then you, there's capture and nobody can get in on your, on your slice. You can't deny that. And, and actually, the other you, thing you, why, you can't why, compete against the Koch brothers. Well, well, the, well, the other thing is, I, I, again, why I don't really think, even though I'm, you know, I talk about natural monopolies, I don't really think that um, in the absence of the state, anyone, anyone business would grow to the, you know, gigantic proportions that a lot of uh, mega corporations have today. Is is because of competition? Because anybody can step in to compete. You know, if if they're, you know, what they call price gouging. You know. 
I disagree. I think Apple would still have had the better product product tonight of them all. Tonight we're going to be talking a really scary story. They didn't need the state to have to yeah, make I, the iPhone. I, I, I promise. Promise. Yeah. No, 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 yeah. And they would still have captured most of the market. Like but still, do, do you think that's a fundamentally evil thing that, that Apple is so dominant? We're gonna go on. I don't think so. If they're if they're it's not fundamentally they're, evil. They're making they're making people's lives better. Right? Yeah, I love I love Apple products. I love I love Google. No you know, it's, yes, no they provide an awesome no service to people. Okay, a new CEO can get Apple and turn it in a very different direction. Yeah, where there's power, where there's powerful tools. I'm gonna show you guys. There's the potential for big repercussions, right? Actually, I, actually, I think the way, like, I think um, like when a when a when a corporation becomes public, like publicly owned and they have shares, you know, that people can buy, um, then you have like a board, and so the CEO has much less power than before it's made public, right? Maybe like I don't know, like 50% power, and so theoretically. That size of a corporation, the, the CEO cannot just come in and you know make sweeping changes. You know, of course you haven't you haven't solved the problem of people's wants versus people's needs. Uh -huh. People want money, right? And they're short-sighted, and externalities exist. And people will get their CEOs, even in the public companies, mm -hmm. to push the company in potentially bad directions mm -hmm. that produce externalities yeah. and that damage our environment. Right? Because people don't have complete information. And they're not logical. Not completely logical. I think, if, I think if you're going to take that position, you can apply the same argument to uh, bureaucrats and politicians. They're, they're not logical yes. and don't have complete yes. information. All also. I'm saying is right? don't allow large accumulations of power because those have the potential to do big harm. Yeah. That's yeah. all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, I, so but and, you and seem again, to be fine with large accumulations of power. Well, I mean, I'm saying, you know, I'm fine with a natural monopoly, but what I'm saying is that it's highly unlikely that such, such a large <coughs> uh, business would, would grow, you know, to such large proportions in the absence of the state. That's what I'm saying. But <laughs> you're saying two things, that it's unlikely that it's going to happen, but that it, if it happens, no harm will be done, or not enough harm will be done if for they, us to, to care about it. 